My name is Mary. I'm currently 28 years old. I live with my husband, Bob, who is two years older than me and his parents. Both my mother-in-law and father-in-law have always been very kind to me, and we've never had the typical issues about daughter-in-law. We've been living together for almost a year now, and our relationship has been very good. Just when everything was going well, it was decided that Bob would be going on a long-term business trip overseas. Bob is highly regarded in his company, and it's said that if this overseas project is successful, a promotion wouldn't be too far in the future. So, both his parents and I decided to send him off with our blessings, telling him, don't worry about home, just do your best. Now it was going to be just the three of us living in the house. Since we've always gotten along, I thought we'd continue to live harmoniously even without Bob. However, then came my sister-in-law, Kate, and her daughter, Sarah. Kate is eight years older than Bob, making her a significantly older sister. And Sarah, Kate's daughter, is a 15-year-old middle schooler right amid adolescence. Kate had married at a young age and was supposed to be living with her husband. But the sudden arrival of these two left both me and the in-laws baffled. Upon entering the house, Kate started looking around curiously and said, It's decent enough. I heard you moved to a new house. It's not remarkably new, but it seems just right for mom and dad. She then smirked. In fact, this was my first time talking to Kate face to face. When Bob and I went to his parents' house to announce our marriage, Kate had said, it's too much trouble and I'm not interested. I'm not going, and canceled on us. She even skipped our wedding for the same reason. So, this was the first time I was meeting both Kate and her daughter Sarah in person. So, you're Mary, Bob's wife, you really do resemble Bob, nothing special about you. She remarked upon seeing me. Despite being at home, Kate was decked out in luxury brands from head to toe. It was clear that she was very confident about her looks. Sarah, her daughter, had a lovely face and wore makeup even though she was still a middle schooler. I was amazed that kids today wear makeup on their days off. While thinking about how amazing kids are these days, I served tea to the two of them. What brings you here today? When I asked, Kate said, Bah, we'll be staying here for a while. So, please take care of us. I was taken back and quickly looked at my in-laws. Both of them seemed surprised and shook their heads in disbelief. Kate, don't you and Sarah have your own home? And what about your husband? What does he have to say about this? When the father-in-law asked, Kate snorted. I don't care about that man. He always scolded both Sarah and me, so we ran away from him. We won't return or contact him until he reflects on his actions. She then crossed her arms and leaned back on the sofa. I haven't really talked much with Kate and it's my first time meeting Sarah. But given my first impression of Kate, I feel like maybe her husband just scolded her a little. She even ditched our wedding announcement and ceremony, and even made sarcastic remarks to me, whom she's hardly spoken to. Her attitude is really intolerable. It seems Sarah, seeing her mother every day, has picked up her habits and perhaps has even become rude. She didn't greet me properly and didn't use polite language. Normally, a parent would scold their child for such behavior, but Kate said nothing. Watching them, I felt like her husband just got reasonably mad, and in response, they decided to run away. My in-laws must have felt the same way. You shouldn't speak about your husband like that. Talk things out with him properly. But Kate firmly refused to move from the sofa. I've already brought our stuff in the car. I'm not leaving this house and I won't go anywhere else. She started acting childishly. Both my in-laws and I tried to convince them to return home, but they both began to complain. They began to throw tantrums, and eventually, they threw a clock that was on the table and broke it. To avoid further destruction inside the house, we reluctantly allowed them to stay for a few days. But this turned out to be a bad decision. I work from home, and it seems both Sarah and Kate think of me as a housemaid and feel like they should make full use of me. Especially Sarah, maybe because of her age, was really demanding. Hey, Mary. I just got back from school and I'm super tired. Could you at least get the bath ready for me? Despite being at work, she just barges into my room. The bath's already cleaned up. All you have to do is press the button to fill it with water. I think even you can do that much, Sarah. I'm not just going to let her walk all over me. Although we allowed them to stay for a few days, we never said they could treat us like servants. Since the chores were being shared by me and my in-laws, I thought that if Kate and Sarah wanted to stay here, they should contribute to the housework too. And expecting the bath to be ready when you come home? Who does she think she is? Despite being a teenager, she has an old man's temper. I thought to myself, I can press a button, but Mary, you're super annoying. 
seriously, so irritating. Sarah left the room complaining. Whenever something doesn't go her way, Sarah always runs straight to her mother to tattle. When my mother-in-law made a dish with carrots, which she didn't like, she complains about it right in front of her. From now on, don't ever put carrots in my food. It's such a turn off. Why would you add something I hate? I don't even want to eat anymore. She threw away her food right in front of the person who prepared it for her. This kind of behavior was unthinkable to me and my in-laws, but her mother, Kate, who should have corrected her, said, Hey, mom, sir is growing. So why don't you make food she can eat? What's wrong with you? Make something she likes. She blamed my mother-in-law. Kate could just cook herself, but since they've been staying here, she hasn't cooked once. She probably can't cook at all. That's probably why Sarah grew up without overcoming her dislike for certain foods. I wonder if she behaves the same way when dining out with friends. Does she loudly say it's a turn off in a restaurant and refuse to eat the dish? Frankly, if she were my friend, I'd cut ties immediately. I assume Sarah probably doesn't have friends as I watched her. I'm not Sarah's mother, so I don't go out of my way to correct her likes and dislikes. But a situation arose where I couldn't just ignore them. I was working from home as usual. I had finished a major task and had just saved the data after submitting a design to a client. Finally done. I exclaimed, rewarding myself with a trip to the local store to buy an apple pie. After purchasing the apple pie and returning home in an excited mood, I brewed some tea and savored the delicious pie. After finishing, I returned to my room with a contented feeling, only to find that Sarah was using my computer without permission. To make matters worse, she had installed and was playing a game on it. Hey, Sarah, what are you doing? I usually use that chair and Sarah was sitting there. I immediately pulled her away from the computer. Hey, what's the big deal? I'm just playing a game, don't disturb me. Why are you playing a game on someone else's computer? That's completely unacceptable, isn't it? Moreover, you installed a game without asking the owner? It's awful to snoop around someone's computer. I scolded Sarah. I believe I wasn't wrong in what I said. My computer is high performance and can easily handle games. At the same time, it contains a lot of important work data. If that were accidentally deleted, it would be a big problem. Move. I pushed Sarah off the chair and went to my computer. As I was moving the installed game and its data to the trash bin, Sarah complained behind me. That's awful. Why are you doing this all of a sudden? I was having fun. What about my game data? Don't complain after using someone's computer without permission. If you don't want to be told off, buy your own computer and play on that. I said angrily. Sarah, with tears in her eyes, left my room. After a while, I checked the contents of my computer and was relieved to find that all my work data was safe. Just then, Kate barged into my room. Hey, making my daughter cry. What do you think you're doing? Kate started shouting at me as soon as she entered the room. I glared back at her. You should discipline your daughter so she doesn't get yelled at and cry. While I was away, she came into my room without permission, used my computer, and even installed and played a game. It's weird enough to enter someone's room without permission, but using their computer too? That doesn't matter. It's your fault for being jobless and having such a good computer. Besides, it's not a big deal. Excuse me? Jobless. I've never called myself a jobless. Perhaps Kate saw that I was always home and just assumed I was unemployed. That's probably why she kept giving me various orders. Both Kate and Sarah thought I was a housewife. I was flabbergasted. Even if someone is a jobless, that doesn't mean you can treat them however you like. It's basic common sense, but it doesn't seem to get through to this mother-daughter duo. Who do you think you're, scolding my daughter even though you're just jobless? You're the one who's truly an embarrassment to society. Then what about you, Kate? Running away from home because your husband is strict, taking your daughter with you, not working, not doing household chores, and relying on your parents and sister-in-law. Can't you the real unemployed person here? What did you say? Shut up. Don't defy me. Leave this place now or I'll break all your things. Most people know not to break others' belongings, but I wouldn't put it past Kate and Sarah. When they first came to the house, they broke a clock. They would probably break the computer too. So, you're saying I should leave? Yes, that's right. Hurry up and go. Understood. I'll pack my things. Give me a moment. I packed the computer I needed for work and stuffed a few clothes into my car. Work had settled down a bit, so I thought, why not take a trip to a hot spring? I entrusted my computer to a trusted friend and headed for the hot springs. After a while, my in-laws returned home. They must have heard from Kate about kicking me out because my mother-in-law called me. 
Mary, I'm so sorry. I can't believe she kicked you out. We'll take responsibility and kick out Kate and Sarah. It's fine, mother-in-law. I decided to relax in the hot spring town since work has been calm. As long as Kate and Sarah leave by the time I return, there's no problem. I could imagine my mother-in-law's voice trembling and her looking pale. In the background, Kate exclaimed, What? Kick us out? We did you a favor by getting rid of that jobless. Shouldn't you be thanking us? My mother-in-law sighed deeply and said, You really have no sense, do you? This house belonged to Mary's late parents, and they left it to her. Our house was to be demolished for urban planning. When we were in trouble, Mary offered for us to live here. Catherine, who inherited this house from her late parents, is the legal owner. And you want to kick her out. Wait a minute. Isn't she unemployed? There's no way a jobless person can afford to maintain this house. What have you been saying all this while? Rachel isn't jobless. She's a designer. She's been working from home every day. It's only natural for her to get angry if someone uses her work computer without permission. A designer. I wasn't informed about this. You weren't informed because you never tried to know. You didn't even attend the introduction meeting or the wedding. And yet, you dare to barge in and demand to live here. You are shameless. As she spoke, the mother-in-law began to cry. I figured a big confrontation was coming, so I ended the call and phoned someone else. That person was Kate's husband, whose contact I had just discovered the day before. Turns out, Kate's husband and I work in the same industry and we've collaborated on a project in the past. It truly is a small world. When I called him, he seemed to think it was for another work-related matter. Hello, how can I help you? Oh, I had a design project I wanted to discuss with you. I'm sorry, this isn't about work. Actually, my sister-in-law has taken over my house and I've been kicked out. Her name is Kate and she has a daughter named Sarah. Kate and Sarah? Kate is your sister-in-law. Apparently, Kate hadn't shared much with her husband about her family or where they lived. He had been searching for them since they ran away from home. While he knew the location of their old family home, it no longer existed due to urban development. If he couldn't find them, he was considering hiring a private investigator. Kate kicked me out of my house because she mistakenly thought I was jobless. She even threatened to break my work computer, so I'm currently in hiding. I'm truly sorry for the trouble my wife and daughter have caused. I've told her countless times to change her selfish ways, but she never listens. It seems likely that Kate and Jack didn't react well to being scolded and decided to run away in frustration. I'll come pick them up right away. We need to discuss divorce as well. Divorce, you say? Yes, I'm hesitant to bring this up with you, Mary, but I've discovered that Sarah isn't my child. I'm planning to divorce Kate and cut ties with Sarah. Is that so? I thought that maybe Sarah was about to find out that she wasn't her husband's child, so she ran away because she didn't want a divorce. If that's true, she's truly regrettable. She not only deceived her husband but also burdened her parents and sister-in-law. I informed the husband of our address, half exasperated. That very day, I heard Kate and Sarah were taken home by the husband. I felt relieved and went home. Two months has passed and I received a call from Kate, possibly after finalizing the divorce. Hey, why is no one at home? I look through the window, and there's no furniture. Huh? We sold that house already. What? Sold it? I was planning to live here with Sarah. Oh, Bob got promoted and was assigned to the overseas office, so I decided to go with him. Her? Overseas? Of course, your parents are coming too. They said they won't be looking after you and Sarah anymore. Bob heard about Kate and Sarah from us. I didn't know such a thing happened in my absence. Why don't we all live together in Japan where the two of them bother us? Both his parents and I fully agreed and decided to sell the house we lived in the US. Until we find a house in Japan, we are living in a walk-up apartment. However, it seems Kate mistakenly thought we already moved to Japan and started spreading rumors that we abandoned her. But the people around them also knew about their personalities. Well, it's only natural for them to be abandoned. We don't plan to help either. I don't want to be friends anymore, so I'm cutting ties. Bye. Sarah has a bad attitude, never studied seriously, and always played around. Due to their parents' divorce and financial constraints, she couldn't attend high school and had to work after her middle school graduation. 
She keeps saying she wants to quit her job, but Kate can't afford to let her quit. No one is willing to help them due to their past selfish behaviors, and they end up in a state where they can't rely on anyone. They live in a rundown apartment and work just to ensure their daily meals. As for me, I continued my designer job overseas and life returned to normal before they came. I want to continue having a fun life with Bob, my father-in-law, and my mother-in-law.